This test procedure is to determine some physical properties and characteristics of a range of different metals. The procedure will be run according to British standards, equivalent to international ISO standards, and each specimen will be tested at the same rate of extension, that being at 3 mm per minute. This will result in a typical plot of force against displacement, therefore the rate of extension, 3 mm per minute, is our constant and the different metals and their states are the variables. The shape of the specimen are referred to as dumbbell in shape. This dumbbell shape is to British ISO standards. By ensuring that using these standards, both for the testing process itself and the specimens, means that results can be compared from any lab across the world using the same standards and those are comparable. Before the test takes place, a number of measurements of the specimen must be made. This includes the diameter of the gauge length, and that would be done in four locations along that length. This is done using digital calipers. To use the calipers, turn it on, making sure the two parts of the calipers are closed and it is zeroed. Make sure that the calipers are reading in millimetres and not inches. Use the wheel to open the calipers and place them onto the specimen. Anywhere along the gauge length and take a first reading of 5.0 5.05 millimetres, then move the calipers to another location, also 5.05 millimetres, to a third location, which is now reading at 5.06 millimetres, and the fourth location along the gauge length reads 5.06 millimetres. Note that the four measurements will be used to take an average and that it is the average diameter used to calculate the area of the specimen. Also note that the specimen is being measured along the flat edge of the calipers, not with the points. The area from the end of the curvature here to the end of the curvature there is the gauge length. However, this time the measurement will be in inches. So change the measurement to read in inches on the calipers. Again, be sure that the faces are closed and it is zeroed. Once again, using the wheel, place the calipers onto the specimen and from the end of the curvature to the other end, this is the measurement. It's just under 0.992 of an inch. Once the gauge length is known, the tensometer elongation gauge needs to be set to that length. The specimen fits in here. Close the arm and it should read zero at the base. Once the specimen has broken, the specimen is expected to have elongated and then when the arm is closed against the two fractured halves again, the red line at the base would move along the gauge in percentage, indicating the ductility of the specimen. To set the equipment, turn this dial here, loosen it anti-clockwise so that it slides up and down the length of the gauge. Slide it into the position that's been measured in inches for this specimen, 0.992 of an inch. Once it's in that position, tighten the screw here clockwise so that this no longer slides up and down. The next stage is to place the specimen between these two parts, close the arm, 
and now the red line needs to be on the zero. In this case it isn't, so now loosen this screw anti-clockwise which would allow this part to move and close. These two halves have to be closed so the specimen reads zero on the gauge down here. It's being held here to ensure that it's closed on the zero and then up against the specimen, tighten that screw. Now the gauge has been set at zero for this particular specimen for once it's been fractured. At that point, closing the arm will result in it moving across the gauge and indicate the ductility in percentage. To fit the specimen into the universal testing machine, the round bar shape needs to be held securely in place. The test is on dumbbell shaped specimens, so collets will be used. Here are two pairs of collets, and each pair has four parts to it. Note on the face of the collets, there are inscriptions. On this one, it's JJ. On this one, it's I and I. Each half of the collet has been machined from one block of steel. This ensures the two halves fit perfectly together. The reason the inscribed halves are not mixed is because once it's been fitted into the machine and force has been applied, very likely it will get stuck onto the machine. And as each machine is well worth over £20,000 to pry off a collet, sometimes with a crowbar can be very costly to then repair the machine from the damage of trying to get that collet off its fixing point. To fit the specimen into the collet, the four parts to be disassembled are a pin, a collar, and then open up the two halves in which the specimen will fit. It will fit in the slots here and protrude through the large face of the two halves. Close the two halves, place the collar back on, and then place this collet onto the machine and this pin is a locating pin which will fit through these holes and through into the machine.